Number 37. A vertebrae is subjected to a shearing force of 500 newtons. Find the shear deformation taking the vertebrae to be a cylinder 3 centimeters high and 4 centimeters in diameter. All right, so they're talking about shearing forces, right? So we're going to be talking about the shear modulus formula over here on the right-hand side. So let's write that formula down here on the page. So we have the uh, shear force is equal to the shear modulus multiplied by the shear deformation, right? That is the change in x, all right? Divided then by the uh, initial length of the particular object in question multiplied by the cross-sectional area. So now what are we looking to find here? What we're looking to find is we are looking to find the shear deformation, aka change in x. So how do we find that? Well, let's just rework this formula, okay? If I were to think about it, I gotta solve the uh, right-hand side for delta x. So basically all I'm gonna do here, take all the values that would be in the numerator here, meaning the shear modulus and the cross-sectional area, put them in the denominator now of the left-hand side. And then take any values in the denominator on the right-hand side and put them in the numerator on the left-hand side. And that's it, we just solve for it, okay? So here's now delta x. All right, so in order to find the values, we need to know, guess what? All four of these values. And if I know all four, then I'll know the shear deformation. So what's the force? Well, they told us, thank God, 500 newtons, right? So this is 500 newtons, great. What's the initial length? Um, well, they told us it's a cylinder. Assume that the vertebra is a cylinder that is three centimeters high. Here, here it is in the picture. Um, but again, I don't like centimeters, nothing personal, but I like meters better. All right, so I got to convert three centimeters into meters. And remember, that would simply be moving the decimal position two places to the left, okay? So it would be 0 .00, 0 0.003, okay? And then I know these other zeros they included, so I'll just include that too at the end, and that's in terms of meters now. So I got that value. Here's the shear modulus. Let's just look it up. So we're going to go to the table. Find bone, we're gonna be looking at tensional value, all right, and find the shear's modulus, 80. All right, and remember that's 80 times 10 to the nine. So we do know what this is, so this is gonna be 80 times, times 10 raised, times 10, sorry, times 10 raised to the ninth power. And the only piece I'm missing is now the cross-sectional area of the object, all right? So what they told us, if you notice, if you're looking down at this cylinder, right, if I were to cut a cross-section here, you'd see a circle, all right? So if I draw that circle out, right over here, and we know that it's diameter. I know that's a little more oval or elliptical-like, but just pretend it's a circle. Um, we know that this diameter in here is going to be four centimeters. If the diameter is four, how big is the radius? Just half, right? Or AKA two centimeters. Again, nothing personal about centimeters, but I hate them. So I'd rather be dealing with meters. So we gotta convert two centimeters into meters. So simply just move the decimal two places to the left. All right, and pluck your decimal there. So we get a value of 0 0.02. And I know they also gave me, you know, some additional zeros there. So I'll, in terms of sig figs, I'll just put them in. So this is the value in meters. Now, why did I need to know the radius? Well, because again, I got to find the cross-sectional area. And I remember that this is a circle. Uh, and the area of a circle is going to be pi r squared. So the area now of this is going to be pi times the radius 0 0.0200 squared. So simply just plug that into the calculator. So we get second pi times 0 .00, nope, 0 0.02 squared. And it works out to be 1.26, 1.26 times 10 raised to the negative three, all right, meters squared. So that's great. And now I just found out my value for A. It's 1.26 times 10 to the minus three. And guess what, guys? All I need to do is now plug it all in, right? So let me just rewrite it nicely. So we had 500 newtons times the initial length of 0 0.03 meters, right? Divided then by the Young's modulus of 80 times 10 to the ninth, and then times 1.26 times 1.26 times 10 to the minus three, and that equals now the shear deformation or the change in X. So simply do 500 times 0 0.03, and then take that result and divide it, be careful with your parentheses, 80 times uh, 10 to the nine, times 1.26 times 10 to the negative three. And what do we get? We get a value of 1.49 times 10 to the minus seven. And that is the shear deformation. And that is in terms of meters. We shouldn't expect it to flex by too much, nor would we, right? Especially the vertebra. Your spinal cord is in the middle.
Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Really uh, do hope this helped you out a lot. Please remember to subscribe and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.